Folks, welcome back to Drawing Conversation. I am your dedicated nerd, host, and artist, Danny Fisher. And today, we're going to be drawing the origin and my favorite all-time battles of the Incredible Hulk. Let's get started. Now, guys, today we are talking about the Jade Giant, the Green Machine, the Savage, the Rampaging, the Incredible Hulk. But before we get started, guys, I want to thank you again. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for coming back. I know that your time is precious, and I'm so grateful to be spending that time with you. And hey, if you haven't subscribed, please go ahead, click that button now. Now, my first exposure to the Incredible Hulk was the 1970s television show starring Bill Bixby and the man Lou Ferrigno. Growing up, I could not get enough. I just absolutely loved The Incredible Hulk. Now, to start talking about Hulk, we have to talk about Bruce Banner. Now, Bruce Banner grew up in a very abusive home. His father was a raging alcoholic, and at a very young age, he actually witnessed his mother being murdered by his father. Now, you can imagine this type of trauma is crippling on a developing mind. And as a result, Bruce developed schizophrenia. That's right. He had dozens of personalities that emerged inside to keep him safe and protect and grown up. Now, as he grew, because he was so reclusive, he turned out to be the ultimate nerd. Well, I kind of know the feeling. And he studied nuclear physics, but specifically gamma radiation, and became an expert in that field. As fate would have it, while testing a gamma bomb, Bruce Banner noticed a young man by the name of Rick Jones just inside the blast radius. Now, Bruce, without even thinking, runs out to save this young man, but in the process is hit with a lethal dose of gamma radiation. And this gamma radiation unlocks the Hulk persona in his mind, and he is instantly transformed into the Gray Hulk. That's right. Originally, the Incredible Hulk was gray, but because of the price of ink, they had to shift to green. And soon after his first appearance, they had to go with green skin. And it was just so perfectly fitting. Now, also originally, during the day, he was mild-mannered Bruce Banner. But at night, he would transform into the rampaging Hulk, wreaking havoc on anything in his path. So what he would do at night is he would sneak off to the desert and just be left alone. Which, really, that's kind of what I like about the Hulk persona. At the end of the day, he just wants to be left alone. What would also change is that instead of transforming into Hulk by night, he would transform during extreme bouts of anxiety, fear, stress, and of course, through anger. And this anger was the driving force for his transformations for the majority of this character's fictional history. Now, in the 1960s, they had no idea what gamma radiation would do to a human. Because today we know that if you're hit with that much radiation, you're just going to get cancer and shortly after die. Now, we're later explained that there was a slight mutation in Bruce Banner's DNA. And this mutation allowed him to absorb gamma radiation and convert that into his own body to produce the Incredible Hulk. Now, the Hulk has a host of powers. He can run at over 400 miles an hour, has a healing factor on par, if not better, than Wolverine's. He has a type of mental block. You see, because of all the personalities bouncing around in his brain, it's hard for any telepath even one as powerful as Professor X, to lock down the persona that's controlling the Hulk at that moment. He has a concussive thunderclap that can emit shockwaves in all directions. And of course, it is his immense strength that the Hulk is known for. Because in the Marvel Universe, Hulk is the strongest there is. You see, Hulk's strength is only limited to his rage and anger, or sometimes fear, in that specific moment. It has been said that Hulk has no upper limits, and with that, he has accomplished amazing feats of strength. Now, keep in mind, the Hulk's been around since 1962, and many writers have reimagined his strengths, abilities, and personalities over the years. So it really kind of depends on who's writing the Hulk to give you the actual definition of his abilities. Now, I want to dive into four of my favorite Hulk battles. Coming in at number four, Hulk versus Wolverine. Now, this took place in November 1974 in Incredible Hulk number 181. This also happens to be Wolverine's very first appearance. That's right. Wolverine actually got his start 
in the Incredible Hulk series. And this battle is a battle for the ages. Hulk is raging in Canada and fighting a character known as the Wendigo. Hey, he's more of a tertiary character in this story, so don't pay too much attention to him. But what the Canadian government does is call in Wolverine to end this conflict. And the battle is spectacular, raging all through the forest. Now, it's a little bit dated, obviously, but it's still a great read. You see, Wolverine has a healing factor that allows him to regenerate from virtually any type of assault. Unbreakable bones and unbreakable razor-sharp adamantium claws to boot. All of these abilities combined make him a lethal adversary for the Hulk, and the two have battled so many times. But if you want to see an amazing battle, go out and read Ultimate Hulk vs. Wolverine. Now, yes, this is a slightly different Marvel Universe, but this battle is stunning. And it takes place over about four issues. So you get a ton of smash. Coming in at number three, Hulk versus Thor. Now, the very first time these two battle was in 1963 in Avengers number three. Now, granted, this fight was really short-lived, but it marked the first time that these two would go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. If you're not familiar with Thor, Thor is a god of Asgard. He's not just a god. He is the god of thunder and the most powerful warrior of Asgard. And as you can imagine, Thor has so many abilities from super strength, durability, speed, and of course, he wields the hammer known as Mjolnir, one of the most powerful weapons in the Marvel Universe. And Thor uses his hammer as his first and best answer for everything. Now, to just give you a little bit of background with Thor's hammer, only if you were worthy could you lift Thor's hammer. And over the years, everyone has attempted to pick up Mjolnir and most often fail to do so. Now, that's not to say that others can't. In fact, we have seen dozens of characters that have been able to pick up Thor's hammer. And over the years, Hulk has been the number one contender to try to pick up Mjolnir and use it against Thor. My personal favorite battle between the two takes place in Hulk Let the Battle Begin, printed in March 2010. And this is just one of my favorite battles between Thor and Hulk. Because, like I've said, Hulk's never been able to lift that hammer. But what he does is he grabs Thor's hand as he's holding his hammer and actually hits him hard enough to knock him out. You can almost imagine this as your big brother playing a game of, hey, why are you hitting yourself? Little brother, if you're listening, sorry about that. Coming in at number three is the battle with Black Bolt. Now, Black Bolt is the leader and king of the Inhumans. Now, the Inhumans, that's kind of a long story, but just consider them a secret race living on Earth, and each one of them have a different special ability. Now, at the core, they were once human, but after many generations, they've kind of separated and become their own civilization in a secret city known as Adelan. These two have battled since the 60s, and Black Bolt has always come out on top. Not to say that Black Bolt is physically stronger, but he has a ton of abilities, from flight to super strength, durability, but his most powerful weapon is his sonic scream. You see, he has the ability to channel the energy of his voice and project it into a scream that is powerful enough to tear holes in reality. That's right. And whenever he's used this ability on the Hulk, it kind of ends the fight quick. But my all-time favorite battle takes place in World War Hulk, issue number one. Hulk returns to Earth after being exiled, and he is raging mad. One of these individuals that made the decision to exile him is Black Bolt, and Hulk is seeking revenge. With the smallest whisper, he blows Hulk almost a quarter of a mile away. Thinking the battle's done, he turns his back and walks away. What you see in the next panel is amazing, with Hulk charging right at Black Bolt with one of the greatest lines ever. I didn't come for a whisper. I want to hear you scream. That's still to this day one of my favorite comic book moments because it's so hard watching such a powerful character like Black Bolt get beat down. But you know what's not hard? Smashing that subscribe button. Hey, it really helps me out, so don't hesitate. Show me some love. Now, my number one favorite Hulk battle has got to be with Iron Man, but specifically Mark 44, 
better known as the Hulkbuster armor. This Hulkbuster suit made its first appearance in May 1994 in Iron Man number 304 and battling in 305. The battle was a little bit lackluster and kind of to the classic 90s comic tropes ended in a misunderstanding and we didn't get the most amazing battle. But what it did is it set a stage for comic nerds on exactly what Tony Stark is capable of building. And since then, we have seen several epic Hulk versus Iron Man Hulkbuster battles. It's the classic ultimate technology versus savage strength. And I have got to give the Marvel Cinematic Universe, but specifically Avengers Age of Ultron, a plug here. Because that is one of my favorite battles of all time. It really shows what the two are capable of doing. And it is such a fun ride to watch those two duke it out. As I've mentioned before. Hulk has gone through several reboots and reimaginings, but at the core, Hulk represents that undeniable force of nature that steals the show every time he gets on stage, and that's what's made him so much fun to read over the years. Friends, thank you again for watching. If you haven't already, please hit that subscribe, hit that like, turn on those notifications, your support truly helps grow this channel. And if you would, please go to the comment section and let me know what your favorite moments of The Incredible Hulk were, and I will talk to you soon.